Good morning. Welcome to the Evangelical Lutheran Church of St. Paul. It is awesome to be gathered together with you either physically or digitally around our God and his word. We are closing up our worship series titled Fearless. This is our last Sunday where we've been spending three weeks on how because we have God in our corners, because we know who we are and who we are in God's eyes, we can live in this world fearless. And our theme today especially deals with the idea that God has made himself known to us through his name. So we'll get to see how God made his name known in the Old Testament and in the New Testament through the name of Jesus. So a special welcome to any guests that we might have with us here today. Just a couple notes. For those that are physically present, as you are sitting in your pews, we are under the impression that it is all right to not have your masks on while you are in the pews, but if at, at any moment you have to move around, get up and move around, then please have that mask uh, put on right away at that point. And there was one other thing I was going to mention. Oh, what was it? No singing, please. Yeah, no singing. We have a cantor, a soloist, that will be singing for us today. And so I invite you to meditate on the words of our psalms and hymns as well. With that, as we always do on the bottom of page one, with a short moment of meditation to get our hearts and our minds ready for our God, a short moment of silence, and then we will join together in that prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have revealed your name to me and that your son Jesus is the promised Savior from all sin. Help me to boldly proclaim this truth and your name to the people in my life so that they no longer live in fear. Amen. For our virtual viewers, just a reminder that there is the worship folder that is found in the description of the YouTube video, and you can just pull that up, and we will follow along then with the words that are found in our worship folder. We'll begin with our opening hymn, hymn number 759, Do Not Let Your Hearts Be Troubled, and I invite you to meditate on those words as our soloist sings it. May God bless your worship this morning. We'll begin on page two with our invocation, confession, and absolution. Please stand. And we begin as we always do in God's house, where two or three are gathered together in his name. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven you all of your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you the strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of this forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are they who take refuge in him. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. So our theme for today is we fearlessly proclaim the name of Jesus. And so our readings focus on how God has revealed his name and through his name who he is to us. And so our Old Testament reading comes from Exodus chapter 34 where we see God proclaiming his law and gospel name to Moses on Mount Sinai. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Moses bowed to the ground at once and worshiped. Lord, he said, if I have found favor in your eyes, then let the Lord go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, forgive our wickedness and our sin and take us as your inheritance. This is the word of the Lord. We turn now to our psalm for the day, Psalm 126, and let's speak the words of this psalm responsibly. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the desert. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson comes from Romans chapter 10. Here we're still focusing on God making his name known. Here Paul tells us that the ones who will be saved will be the ones who call on Jesus' name. Paul writes, Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteous that is by faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, 
and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This too is the word of the Lord. Let's turn now to our verse of the day. Alleluia. Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Alleluia. These words are written that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia. Out of respect for the words and works of our Savior, please stand for the gospel. Our gospel comes from Matthew chapter 16, starting at the 13th verse. Here, Peter boldly confesses that Jesus is the promised Messiah, the promised Savior from sin. This will also be the basis of Pastor Getzinger's message this morning. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. We'll continue now with our hymn of the day, hymn number 536. Our soloist will be singing verses 1 and 4 for us.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. What was that theme of our worship today? Open up your, cup, open up your worship folder. Inside front cover. We fearlessly proclaim the name of Jesus. That's our focus for the entire worship service today. And yet, you have not even overcome your fear of snakes yet let alone your fear of public speaking. How is this supposed to work? Hopefully, in 17 to 19 minutes, we'll find out. So the last time that you and I were together here in church, we went home with this really big idea, at least, well, that's my prayer, that we all went home with this really big idea. And the big idea was this. Don't tell God how big your storms are. Tell your storms how big your God is. Or to condense it even more and say the same thing in a different way, if your Jesus is indeed the Son of God, which he is, and if this Jesus can indeed do impossible things, which he can, and if you are indeed one of Jesus' little lambs, which you are, then what in all the world do you have to be afraid of? And the big idea that I pray that you went home with last week was the answer to that question, nothing. Absolutely nothing. So if you and I do not need to fear when Jesus is near, and he's always near, then what is the next logical reaction for one of these little lambs of Jesus? What's their next logical deduction of how they should conduct their lives? Well, not in fear, in fearlessness, in boldness, in fact. Like you see the Apostle Peter in our gospel lesson for this morning with his bold confession about who he believes this Jesus to be. You know, sometimes Peter is just so rock solid. He's just like cooking with white gas and he's just spiritually just right on. And so it should be. Because his name, after all, Petros, comes from the Greek word Petra, which means rock. Peter means rock. But sometimes, as you know, Peter, well, he's not such a big, giant spiritual rock, is he? Fast forward with me from Matthew chapter 16 to Matthew chapter 26. And what's going on there? Well, I'll help you out in case it's been a while since you read the end of Matthew. Jesus, along with Peter, along with the rest of the disciples, are all heading out where? To the Garden of Gethsemane, where they are going to pray, which is the place where Jesus is going to be betrayed, which is the place where Jesus is going to be arrested. And eventually this night, Jesus is also, well, it's going to go into the morning, but he's going to go through three trials, and he's ultimately going to be crucified. It's during these events, in the early stages of these events, that Peter gets this bright idea to boldly proclaim, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. And before the rooster crows, he denies his Lord three times. One minute... Peter is just this gigantic spiritual rock. And the next minute, he's barely a spiritual grain of sand. It is said of faith, high or up and down, ebb and flow. Faith is strong and then it's low. And yet, in spite of all of that, faith always, always shows itself. So Jesus 
is not conducting a market survey using his disciples as the research group when he throws out this question with eternal consequences. No, this is more like an examination of the men whom he's relying upon to have faith that will show itself after he is gone. Jesus is going to make this extremely personal for each one of these men when he lays out this question to them and he says, now, what about you? Not your fellow disciple next to you. Not what your wife at home thinks. What about you, he says to his disciples. And then the second question that now that he's got their attention, who do you say that I am? This is the equivalent of having the Old Testament patriarch, Joseph, standing in front of you, or Joshua, standing in front of you, challenging you to a man with this very personal life-deciding answer to this question, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. It's the same idea. Okay, well, if you're a visitor here today, or you're dialing in live stream, or you're watching this video later in this week, you might actually at this point be asking yourself, why is all of this important anyway? This, this knowing who Jesus is and, and confessing who Jesus is, I don't understand. It's because of the backstory. Backstory. Most of you here and listening know this backstory, but here's the backstory. You and I are born into this world estranged from God, unreconciled with God, hostile to God because of sin. And sin's fruit or sin's produce, if you will, its product is unholiness, unrighteousness in God's eyes, but it's disobedience, it's active hostility against God's wills and desire. And this is what puts us at odds with him. This sin bars us from having any sort of relationship with this God now in time, and it most certainly bars us from having any sort of heavenly life with him in the future. Oh, but we human beings, we, we have such a knack for being able to manipulate this truth about sin. We human beings, do, no, to no credit of our own, do a pretty good job of ignoring God or pretending that he doesn't exist or at least acknowledging but then taking what his word says and kind of twisting it, manipulating it so it doesn't affect my life as much and doesn't put the spotlight on me. We have this way of rationalizing the truths about an ultimate one creator rationalizing that, that truth about that creator and turning him into some kind of nameless energy force. You can ignore, you can pretend, you can twist, you can rationalize, but that does not mean that God is not real. He is. And he's watching. And he sees you. And he knows your past. He knows the past of humanity. We have rejected him. We have spat upon him. We have put him to death. And you know what? There's only one thing that he wants from us. He wants us to love him. This sin that we're talking about. It's like a parent 
who warns their child about their disobedience. That if you keep this up, there's going to be consequences. Now, these consequences that our Heavenly Father talks about, this is not idle talk. It will happen if you continue in your disobedience. But the thing about this Heavenly Father of ours, this God of ours, is that he does not want to have to enact these consequences of his justice against sin. So how in all the world is he going to work this out? This is still part of the backstory. What's his plan? This is where Jesus enters in. Jesus is the one whom God appointed and anointed to be the one to patch things up for you and me between his Father and us. As Peter confessed, he was more than a great prophet. He was far more than just an enlightened teacher. And he was not just some kind of rabble-rousing rabbi that got on the wrong side of the right people in power. No, this Jesus is exactly whom Peter confessed him to be. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. What was the result of that confession? of Peter's confession. Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. Now stop and pause about this one simple little sentence for just a moment. Why is it so important to know who this Jesus is? Why is it so important to love him? Blessed are you, surely, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. Blessed are you, Dalton Griffiths, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And to every single soul in this church this morning, This Jesus, the Apostle Paul wrote to his Romans, this is the living God who poured out his love into your hearts by the Holy Spirit, and he has given you a faith to believe that God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, is what he wrote, to be sin for you and you and you and you and you. And I could just keep going across the people in the pews. to be sin for us. Jesus is your restoration to righteousness so that you can have that heavenly life forever that he wants wants to give to you. But what about you, Jesus said? Who do you say I am? For the Christian, conviction spells the word faith. And faith always shows itself because Jesus is now a living reality for us. That fearlessness that Jesus showed after his strengthening in the Garden of Gethsemane, that fearlessness that Jesus showed when he went to the cross to pay the admission price for your heavenly life, that fearlessness has been implanted in you in the form of the Holy Spirit. You see, folks, sin is a remnant, or fear is a remnant of sin, a a remnant of our old Adam that still lives in us. But, But the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And that means that fearlessness dwells in you, which means that all you need to do is get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit do his work within you. You see, humanly speaking, what the universal church needs 
What this evangelical Lutheran Church of St. Paul needs is more fearless men, women, and children who will fearlessly confess to the world along with the prophet, of I, prophet Isaiah, my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. And then not just not that be lip service and not just words which you honestly believe, but let those words then be a model within your own homes so that your children and your grandchildren and the neighborhood children can see that conviction in you. See, humanly speaking, what the universal church needs, but what this particular church also needs, is men, women, and children who will fearlessly, boldly, stand shoulder to shoulder with the apostles Peter and the apostle John when they confessed, for we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and what we have heard. You have seen life personified. That life has been implanted into you to give you boldness, to have the message of eternal life, the only way to eternal life. But, but, <laughs> but, we all have seasons in our life when we get ourselves into bad habits, right? With all due respect and love in my heart, I, I couldn't think of a better analogy other than to say that you and I are an awful lot like birds. Yep. We're an awful lot like birds, and I don't just mean the Australian magpie that we get easily distracted by shiny things, because that happens too. No, we're birds in the sense that we have blind spots. And those blind spots make us absolutely oblivious to perils to our soul. And it shows. The Apostle James, Jesus' half-brother, reminds us that faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. So, then the question is, how does living as a confessional Lutheran, how does it look in real life? Well, listen to some of these and see if these don't help you identify some of those blind spots that you might have. Faith shows itself, A, by kind of, sort of, getting your children and grandchildren to Sunday school and to catechism class and your, yourself into some worship slot on Sunday morning, whether physically here or live stream. Or, or B, faith shows itself by living the model and the example that is evident to all that Jesus, the savior of your soul, is worth making time for. Faith shows itself, A, by supporting the work of Jesus' ministry in our local congregation with your leftover toony $5, $10, or $20 bill. Or B, faith shows itself by prayerfully sitting down with that checkbook of yours and figuring out what is a proportionate first fruits thank offering with what the Lord has blessed you with. Faith shows itself, A, by discussing church attendance with your falling away or fallen away, lapsing children who continue to despise God's word you could just ignore all that, or faith shows itself be by sitting down with them, regardless of their age, whether they live in your household or not, because this has spiritual, eternal consequences. You sit down with them and have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with them to lovingly remind them that Jesus is their restoration to righteousness, and he is everything. Faith shows itself, A, by just kind of <laughs> turning a blind eye to that sin that your friend of yours is, is living in or doing because, you know, after all, Pastor, it is legal here in Canada. <laughs> or faith shows itself, B, 
by doing the tough work, the loving, motivated tough work of exercising the office of the keys and reminding that individual that heaven is shut down and locked tight to unrepentant sinners. Faith shows itself by A, ignoring my own Peter-like, Jesus-denying, barely a grain of sand spiritualness or faith, or faith shows itself B, by fessing up to my shortcomings and my failures and confessing my sin and asking my restoration to righteousness for forgiveness. And you know the answer you're going to hear. You are forgiven, my son. You are forgiven, my daughter. Come. The gates of heaven are open to you. Many years ago, I was having a shutting call. I heard one of the most beautiful prayers from a lay person. It, it, it went something like this, essentially like this. It, this individual said to me, you know, Pastor, I'm at the point in my life where I absolutely need or want nothing. But since I was young, I continue to ask the Lord for the same three things for the last 50 or 60 years. The first thing I always ask the Lord for is that I ask him for greater spiritual wisdom. The second thing I ask him for is for a stronger faith. And the third thing I ask him for is that my children would one day be with me in heaven. My friends, that's a prayer where faith is showing itself. It would be really helpful for God's universal church. It would be really helpful for God's church here at the Evangelical Lutheran Church of St. Paul if we understood the word church the way that Jesus meant it. Church is not a place. It's a process. It's a process of that Holy Spirit that lives inside of you, continuing to build and strengthen your faith so that you become more fearless with the truth of the gospel that he has favored you with. Church is not just a destination, but it is an everyday exercising of your vocation that God has seen fit to place you as mother or father or grandparent, as worker, as unemployed, as government worker, it doesn't matter. All flowing from this truth that you are a redeemed child of God, a dear shepherd of Jesus' flock. Church is most certainly not just an arrival, but it is an endless activity of faith showing itself because it flows from the truth that has profoundly changed your life forever. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Go forth and let your faith show itself. Amen. Please stand. He who began a good work in you will carry it on to the completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, Pastor Thompson will come forward and lead us in our confession of the Apostles' Creed. At the core of Pastor Getzinger's hymn is that faith expresses itself, declaring the name of Jesus in all different ways of our lives. The Apostles' Creed is one of the ways that our faith declares 
the name of Jesus. All of those truths that our faith is based on. Let's confess the words of this creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This normally would be the point in our worship service where we would have an opportunity to give some of our financial fruits, first fruits to our Lord through our offerings. That's obviously not possible these days to do as we used to. So just, this is just a reminder that we do have a way to do that online. If you go to our homepage at stpaulottawa.org, you can just click that Give button at the top. Uh, for those that are present here, if you don't want to give electronically, we do have a basket that is in the middle of the doorway on the way out there, and you can drop your offering envelopes there on the way out. And at this point, we will continue with the responsive prayer of the church that's found on page 7. Blessed Lord, you have promised that where two or three are gathered together in your name, you are in the midst of them. Hear the prayers of your people and grant our supplications. O Lord, grant to your people courage that with boldness we may speak your name in witness and warn sinners so that they may come to faith and repentance and so enjoy the forgiveness of their sins. Give your church wisdom and strength by your Spirit that she may be steadfast and unmovable in your word and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, you urge us to give special care and guidance to the young and those new to the faith. Give us grace that we may not lead them into temptation or sin, but guard their faith by making known to them the full counsel of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you have given the day for work and the night for rest. Bless all honest labor and industry, artists and artisans, and those in caring professions. Keep us in humility and guard us against pride and arrogance. Give to us a spirit of generosity that we may share with others the blessings that flow from our labors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, deliver us from pandemic and pestilence, from disaster and danger, and from a sudden death, that kept in faith we may be preserved through this mortal life and in death, be received into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us, O Lord, we cry to you in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, whom with the Spirit you are one God and one Lord, now and forevermore. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the order of the sacrament. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock till he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and we join their glorious song. Holy, 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 Lord God of heavenly hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. At this time, I invite you to pick up your baggies with the wine and the bread that's within them and open them up and take those two elements out. And we will first have the words of institution where we set these elements aside and then please take the bread and wine at my direction in a few moments. The words of institution. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and he gave it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Amen. I invite you now to take up the wafer, the bread, and, and take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and your Savior Jesus Christ, given on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. And go ahead and drink the wine. Take and drink. This is his true blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. And now may this true body and this true blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith into life everlasting. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. We join together. Lord, you now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. O God, the Father, source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but will rule our hearts and our minds by your Holy Spirit, so that we willingly serve you day after day through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated. And we'll join together in meditating on the words of our closing hymn, hymn 382, my hope is built on nothing less sung by our soloist.
Good morning again. Welcome to all of you, especially to any visitors that we might have with us this morning. Glad to have you here. A um, couple of announcements. Uh, please take the worship folder home with you or take it home and dispose of it there. In other words, that's an, a kind way of saying recycle the information in here throughout the week for your own meditation purposes, but we really don't want the paper sitting around in church for the rest of the week. So we're going to ask you to take that home and use that as a spiritual tool in your fight against your own sinful flesh and the devil this, this coming week. The other thing I want to remind you about that this coming Sunday is Education Sunday and we have a fair number of parents that we're going to be bringing their children for Sunday school. So if you are an adult without children in Sunday school, we're going to ask you to entertain the idea of joining us for worship on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. Uh, we have more than enough room to accommodate all of you and if you are running into uh, uh, ride problems because you just don't drive at night so well, why don't you just give the church office a call and leave a message and Sue will be able to get that to us and we'll try to figure out how to sort that around for you. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to share with you is um, please make sure that the, your communion kit, the baggie goes in the garbage and the little condiment cup goes into the recycle bin. And lastly, Annie Alley is a member of our congregation. She has a friend who is suffering a pretty bad disease. I don't want to misspeak and say what it is, but the long and the short of it is, we, this church has donated to Annie to give to her friend a nice lazy boy recliner. But we need some help getting it there. And I'm assuming that Annie's friend is not too far from the church, but what does it matter? So if you have a pickup truck or a cargo van or a semi truck that you can stop by and pick this, this lazy boy chair up and help us deliver it to Annie's friend, that would be absolutely wonderful. How are you gonna let us know if you can do that? You can try to flag down Christine Thompson uh, if you're here today and you know that you can do this and she'll coordinate that. Christine, I didn't even ask you if you'd be willing to do that, but okay. If you're not here, but you have a truck at home, please call the church office and leave a message and Sue will get in touch with Christine and connect the two of you. But we really want to get this chair to Annie's friend. With that, Pastor Thompson, I think I am all announced out. Yeah, just maybe one quick thing to add, and that's for especially parents returning with kids next Sunday. Visit our website, stpaulottawa.org, and click on that Youth and Family button at the top because we've got all the highlights for our reopening plan there, including like times for when kids are going to be going up and down and things like that because we need to, of course, space out the classes. So with that, oh, maybe a quick reminder that we are going back to alternating communion. That's on right. uh, on Sundays. So we are going back to communion on the first and third Sunday of the month. Um, so that means this upcoming Education Sunday, there will not be communion. The following Sunday, we will have communion. And that's going to be uh, our, our practice as it was before for the coming future. Super. So that would be your clue that now is the time for you to put your face mask back on and someone will come from the back to the front and usher you out and we will scamper to get outside and meet you on the tarmac or in the parking lot. Please just try to not on the sidewalk in front of church, come around into our laneway. With that, have a blessed week in Christ.